Now we've looked closely at how to read an artwork. I want to share with you how I go about using this information to write a creative response to an artwork, to inspire you to have a go at writing your own. Firstly, I want you to use the exact same process we used to analyse the works by Frances Walker and Sylvia Wishart on a new artwork. This work is a print by Donald Addison, an Aberdeen-based artist who, like Walker and Wishart, has lots of work in the GAT collection and is extremely popular with hospital staff, patients and visitors. Once again, I want you to observe the work, sketch what you remember and answer the same set of questions. After this, I'll explore potential interpretations of the work before reading my own creative response to the piece. As before, pause the video and observe the image for around a minute. Now, without looking back at the image, take a couple of minutes to sketch what you remember seeing. Now compare your sketch with the original image and then answer the same set of questions that we looked at with Walker and Wishart's work, except for the last questions, which refer specifically to painting, as Addison's work is a print. Before you pause the video again, I can reveal that the title of this work is Pitmedin Farmhouse Kitchen. Now that you've had a go at observing and analysing this print by Addison, I want to share some of the different interpretations I've heard about this work during my time at GATT. Some folk have found the use of yellow in the work as something positive and bright in the image, which may reflect that the man in the kitchen is relaxed or content. Others have found that it reminded them of a sepia photograph, giving off a nostalgic feel and the sense that this image is set in the past or that it reflects the man himself looking back into his own past, maybe missing someone. Others have been more drawn to the shadows and the sooty marks on the walls, which they feel reflects the man's depressed state. Another interesting split in interpretation has been different opinions on what the man is holding in his hands. Some see a newspaper, which gives the sense that the man is concentrating on an article and is slightly mentally removed from his environment, while others believe he is in fact holding up a sheet or garment of some kind, given there is laundry hanging up above the fireplace. In my creative response to Addison's print, I used my notes from my observations and interpretations of the artwork, and also ruminated on its title, Pitmedin Farmhouse Kitchen, which made me think of its links with the Northeast. With this in mind, I decided to write a poem in Doric, imagining the man's voice and what he could see around him. The poem is called Stillery, an obsolete Scots word meaning a state of greater silence or stillness. Returning home for feeding beasts, I put doom my cabbage whacking steak. Licked up my pipe and puff out reek towards my rifle, wa peak. My back being cracks as I tick my seat, at a table laid with crumbs of breed. I blow the wally dog mantle piece, the kettle jeels, the embers dee. Now the clays have dried, I'll fold the sheets. Gee her a chance to get some sleep. She spent our morning on her knees, scrubbing fleers and dechting beets. As I fold the sheets, bonny and neat, and the yak's thaw on my back and feet, I talk tint a silence, I feel release. This is my time, so gee's peace. Using artworks like this as an inspiration to write something like poetry can be very useful. Poetry is often composed of a series of strong visual images, giving the listener something concrete to visualise in their minds, and art can helpfully provide the content for this. As well as what I see, there are other ways I'm influenced by artworks like this when I create a poem or text in response. I may also look through archives exploring the time or place in which the work is set, I may also look into literary or linguistic links with the poem's title or setting. Finally, I've also found it useful to explore the artist's background and the actual artistic process involved in the creation of their work. As an example of this, let's look closer at a different artwork. Initially, I was drawn to this artwork by Nicola Murray because it reminded me of an X-ray, which had a touch of irony hanging up in the main corridor of Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. But then in closer inspection, I was drawn to the realistic yet ghostly looking plants, particularly the dandelion clock sat at the top. I also found its title Lost Mountain intriguing, 
but this still wasn't enough for me to work with. So I did a little bit of research into the artist and discovered that she used a special photographic process to create this print, known as a cyanotype, most often used to create architectural blueprints. As part of a series titled Yield, Murray took inspiration from a book of cyanotypes held by the Royal Botanical Gardens in Edinburgh to create these works which feature different plants in slightly fictionalised arrangements, made possible thanks to digital manipulation. She named each of these prints after a different Atlantic hurricane, hence the title Lost Mountain. As well as my notes on what I observed in the artwork, I also noted down words and phrases from this research into Murray's process, and then finally felt that I had enough material to play around with on the page creating the following poem, which hasn't changed much since its first draft, inspired by this collection of observations. The poem is simply titled, Cyanotype. The sky is midnight blue, as the crescent moon x-rays the weeds in our garden, printing negatives on the backs of my eyelids, as you bend down to blow a steaming gust at the dandelion clock. It dances itself empty, sends up, its parachutes in a new journey to take root under someone else's sky. Now it's your turn to have a go at writing a creative response to an artwork. It doesn't have to be a poem. It can be a story or a memory or a new form of your own making. Just remember to take some time to really look at the artwork and note down your observations. And if you still feel you need something more to inspire you, do a bit of research into the artist or the context of the work. Most importantly, have fun and don't forget to play around with the words on the page until they start to form something you're happy with. Good luck.